Greetings, comic friends. It's another week, so it's time for another TGIW. Thank God it is Wednesday, celebrating the best day of the week, Wednesday, New Comic Book Day. <clears throat> this was a fairly decent week. Had some good stuff come out this week. Uh, I picked up a trade. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, something new, because that's what I need, is more stuff to read. A total of nine books. Mostly they were great. There are a couple that... Uh, I'm not super excited about, but we'll talk about those when we talk about those. First up, Invincible Iron Man number seven. Uh, as, I, as I've been saying, it's been a long time since I read an Iron Man book. And for whatever reason, I decided to jump on it. Like, you know what? I've, I, you know, it's been a long time since I read Iron Man. Let's see what's going on. How is it? And I'm, I'm very glad that I did. It's very, very good. Tony's business um, nemesis, I suppose, uh, Fei Long, I believe this is what his name is, has taken over Stark Industries and is doing bad things. He is making Sentinels using Stark technology. Unsurprisingly, Tony is not happy about this and he wants to try to do something, but what can he do? Like, legally... He, there's nothing he can do, right? There's nothing illegal about making these Sentinels. Maybe. <laughs> uh, it is Fei Long's company now. So he has to come up with other ways to, to try to stop his tech from being used in these ways. I think what's great about this particular run or story so far is this plays a nice balance between Iron Man and Tony Stark. I, I, I think I've read... Iron Man books in the past where it's a little bit too much Iron Man is a little too much Tony Stark. You know, it, it leans too much in superheroism or it leans too much in just like corporate stuff and corporate espionage and, and whatnot. They're both integral parts of the character, but I think they are equally so. And this feels like it, it it's striking that balance. So I think that's part of why, other than just what the, the, the story is in general, why I like this, this story so far. And I, I hope it keeps it up. I am interested to see where the story itself goes. It ends in a very interesting place in this issue. And don't want to give any spoilers away. But it, it is one of my... my When this shows up, it is one of usually one of my first reads. Because I'm just interested and excited to get back into it. On the other side... Red Goblin number 5... So this is a part of a part four of seven of Carnage Reigns. And I'm not reading Carnage Reigns. I don't really know what's going on in Carnage Reigns. This is, I think, the second book that I've read that is a Carnage Reign tie-in. The last one was the, the previous Miles Morales Spider-Man. And I enjoyed it. Not because of the Carnage Reign stuff, because I had no idea what was going on there. But they did a good job of also making it a decent standalone Miles Morales book. That is not the case with Red Goblin. I like Red Goblin. I've liked it up to this point. And I'm not going to put this on the book itself. I, I put it on it kind of being forced to have this Carnage Reigns stuff. But without knowing what's going on in Carnage Reigns, you know, I, I could get some from context. Evidently, Carnage can mind control people now, which... I'm glad I'm not reading Carnage Reigns because that sounds dumb. But it, it, the Miles Morales story probably could get away with it being earlier in the Carnage Reigns storyline. Now this, part four or seven, it's right in the middle of it. It it would have had a hard time getting away with that. It had to have some development in, in progress in the Carnage Reigns story, which I think hindered the book itself as just a Red Goblin book. So... I, I don't fault the Red Goblin. I don't fault the, the book itself or, or the, the team. Just that they were forced to tell this story kind of outside what is normally going on in Red Goblin. But because of that, I didn't really enjoy it. I I don't know. I just... I don't like Carnage that much. And it's not a hate for symbiotes, obviously, because I'm reading Red Goblin. I just don't think Carnage is that interesting of a character. I, he's way too one note of... I'm a murderous sociopath. 
and that's not interesting. I, I think maybe he's interesting when he first showed up, you know, way back in the 90s, because it was a new sort of thing. But he's such a one-note character that whenever he shows up, it's like, well, it's just this crap again. He's, he has no character development. It's just, what's his new plot in being a psychopath? That that doesn't make for interesting storytelling to me personally. So that's why I didn't. I don't read the Carnage book. I didn't jump into Carnage Reigns. I just I don't think he's an interesting character anymore. They need to do something with him, right? Like even Norman Osborn, right? Green Goblin is just was just a psychopath. They've done stuff with him that make him interesting, and not just like the Gold Goblin stuff. Now I, I can understand where people don't find that interesting or don't like it. I personally do, but that aside, he's still been an interesting character because he's he's had the the Green Goblin persona and Norman Osborn's persona, where obviously they're linked, but he has to play kind of two sides. When it comes to Carnage, Cletus Cassidy and Carnage are the same. There's no distinction between them whatsoever, so you can't really even try to do anything interesting with him. But anyway, that's my carnage rant. <laughs> well, welcome to my TED talk. Fantastic Four number seven, eight. We're on number eight. So the, the Fantastic Four are off on Aunt Petunia's farm in this, you know, it's, it's Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Weird stuff is going to follow them wherever they go. It seems pretty coincidental. <laughs> That like this weird thing started happening in the town that is close to the farm. Fine, whatever. It's comics, right? The story itself is is pretty interesting. It's it's not like a one shot sort of story like the maybe the last the last few have have sort of been. This has does this have a to be continued to be resolved. The the type of story that's happening does kind of fall within the Fantastic Four wheelhouse without being a cosmic level threat at least as far as we know, at, at least it's not at this point. But it's it's a fun little, starts out as kind of a mystery story, like what's going on? Something weird is happening. And we eventually kind of find out why, but it, it needs to be resolved. So it's good. Out of all the Fantastic Four we've seen so far, it's probably the weakest I think we've we've seen, but it was still still a good a good read. Batman 136, so we have... Batman is coming out of after the whole failsafe thing and coming back from the alternate universe. Supposed to be kind of look, Batman, you need some downtime, is kind of what the, the Bat family is, is saying, and, and he's ignoring them and like, no, I have to just keep going and keep doing what I do. There's not a whole lot that really happens in this issue. Uh it's it's mostly about getting Bruce back into his role as Bruce and Batman post the last couple of arcs. Uh, evidently, some stuff has happened in Catwoman that is referenced here that I don't read Catwoman, so I, I'm not sure what that's about. I mean, it, it told me. So that is what it is. But really, it's just, it's just kind of, I think, level-setting Batman for what's to come next. Tales from Nottingham, number four. Again, I, I don't know what else to say about this book. It's it's The original Nottingham was fantastic. This continues to be fantastic. This is a story with uh, Friar Tuck and um, the sheriff. Someone has... The, the um, archbishop has, has visited Nottinghamshire... And is expecting his tithe to be delivered to him. But the tithe has been stolen. And the archbishop is basically taking the position of, I need my tithe. If you don't get the tithe back, I'm going to squeeze the citizens for more tithe. So it's about getting that tithe back. And, and, and how Robin Hood and the, the Merry Men tie into into that up next adventures of superman john kent number four this is God, it's so good um 
So John Kent is in the Injustice universe. I, I did not read Injustice. I hear it's very good. It's something that's kind of always in the back of my mind. Like, yeah, I should go read Injustice. The previous issues have given enough of a primer to kind of let you know what's going on. It gave enough of a quick and dirty history or background of, of how the Injustice universe got to be where it is. John Kent is on good terms with Superman of the Injustice universe, who is bad. And Superman is trying to show John Kent that the way that he's doing things is the right way. John, rightfully so, is not convinced so he wants to go talk to the other side. You know, Batman's pool of, of characters that are kind of up against the reign of, of Superman. To kind of decide, you know, what, who's right in this. Uh, so he, he talks with Batman's group. And in the end, he's like, well, you know, they, they both make arguments for themselves they're obviously biased into what they think is the right way. I want to go get sort of a neutral opinion. So he goes and does that. I'm not going to say any more about that and to, to not give it away, but it's, um, it's done very well. It's done very well. And it, it makes sense. Uh, but it was, it was continues to be, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I've enjoyed the other, John Kent Superman books. Uh, this this really isn't much different than the previous ones. It's it's the same. I don't know if it's the same entire team, but I believe it's at least the same the same writer. So I, I kind of lump them all together. It's kind of the same run. It's all the the Taylor stuff. I I, I don't know if I've enjoyed anything Superman more than this, um, other than All Star Superman. Which, that's, I mean, that's kind of a thing of its own, right? But it's, it's very, very good Superman. <laughs> Spider-Man number nine. So, Spider-Man has had his spider sense turned up to 11. So, basically, he feels other people being in danger all across the city. So he's running around everyone that's in some kind of danger, no, ma no matter how they perceive danger. Um, he, he feels it and senses it. And it's, it's too much, right? Because across the enti entirety of, of Manhattan or, or whatever, anyone that feels any sort of danger or, or would be in danger, not necessarily they have to feel it, right? Because that's not how spider sense works. It's like it warns you of, you're about to be in danger or something, even if you don't know it. It has that same effect. It's it's all over the place. It's, you know, every little thing, it's driving him bonkers. <clears throat> um, we, and we, we see the worst aspect of that being that if, if he is fighting somebody, he feels their danger that's imposed on them by Spider-Man himself. <laughs> So it's hard for him to confront villains because it pains him because he's putting them in their own danger. Anyway, also Electro's there doing things. So, but the 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 crux of it is this this overpowered um, spider sense. Noctera number fifteen. Uh, the last couple issues, I'm like, all right, this is winding down. It seems like a place for it to, to, to end. Apparently, I was wrong. I really want it to end. Uh, I think it could have ended by now. And I, I doubt that was their original plan. I doubt that they're like, they're like dragging it on just for the sake of dragging it on. Because I don't think this book is super widely popular. It is good. But it's not like a... Something is killing the children. It's like, oh, we, we, we got to keep milking the money cow. I'm sure it's going towards its originally intended conclusion. But its conclusion could have been done earlier. By It could have been done by now, I think. Anyway, on it goes. They have a final plan. <laughs> 
how long is that going to succeed? How long is it going to take? I don't know. It's continued in a one shot. I hate when you do that. Like just, you're not an epic enough book to need one shots and spinoffs and all this stuff. Just tell your freaking story and let's, let's do it. So this, this is feeling a, a bit of a slog. Um, so this, this, and unfortunately Red Goblin, I, I didn't, I didn't super enjoy this week. Last issue is Daredevil 12. Zdarsky, I, the last few issues of Daredevil, when I start reading them and it's hand stuff, every time I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of done with this Daredevil dealing with the hand. Can we just get back to Daredevil being Daredevil? And then I read through the issue, and by the end, I'm like sucked back in, like, nope, <laughs> this is great. Let's keep going. Gotta just gotta trust in Zadarsky because he he knows what he's doing. He makes an interesting story. He's doing something a bit different with Daredevil while still feeling familiar and it not being out of character at all. But man, yeah, every time I read it, like, I just I, I wanna get back to Daredevil swinging around Hell's Kitchen doing stuff. He pulls me right back in. Like, no, this is good. Uh, there is some interaction with Elektra here, as the, the cover would suggest, so no spoiler there. But in this issue, I think it takes the, the next big step forward into what the next arc is going to be. And it, it is probably going to be a doozy. But it was it was great. So the other thing that I got, I made the mistake of when I was at at the shop, uh, I, I, I picked this up because the cover intrigued me. So the first volume of Once Upon a Time at the End of the World. The cover with these two people, obviously in an apocalypse world, um, You know, kissing through their gas mask and all this stuff. The, the cover intrigued me, right? So I picked it up and I was looking at it. And one of my friends that worked at the shop saw me doing it. And they're like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's great. You're going to love it. So, and, and they, I mean, they know me and the stuff that I, that I like. I, I go to them for a recommendation. When I see something new on the wall or whatever, I'm like, hey, this for me, and be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, no, that's not really your sort of thing. So I trust them when when they give me um, any sort of you know, advice or recommendations. And like, yeah, this is the best thing that that they they've read from Jason Aaron and all this stuff. And I'm really high on Jason Aaron right now off of that that Punisher run. So like, all right, you know me, Jason Aaron. The 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 overall concept I love post apocalyptic stuff anyway. I, like, I love a good love story, so let's see. And it's... I, I have read through the, the entire thing already. Uh, it, it was great. <laughs> it was so, so good. It's it's this mix of um, just general post-apocalyptic stuff, uh, a, a bit of humor, a good amount of humor. I wouldn't call it a comedy book, but there is, there is humor in there uh the relationship between the two main characters and how they grow close to each other the, the the conflict that's there other than just survival in the apocalypse is really interesting and engaging it's told in an interesting way with a combination of flashbacks and and fast forwards definitely curious to see where this fast forwarded world comes from and how they get there because it's like these are kids. They're probably they're probably teenagers, and the flash forward is them, like old, probably seventies, something like that. But it's it's fun. It's sweet. It's interesting. It's engaging. It really draws you in. I, I just it was great. I'm I'm glad that I picked it up. I'm I'm glad that I read it. I immediately messaged my friend back like, "Yep, you were right. Make sure that." all future trades get ordered for me. <laughs> like, let's do this. This is great. So I do highly recommend this. Highly, highly recommend it. 
And um, yeah, that's that's it. So nine books plus the trade, a, f a fairly full week as far as as the individual books go. And two of them were kind of disappointing. I, I really just didn't get much out of them, much enjoyment out of them. The Red Goblin one, I'm not so worried about because once, because you know that was kind of the fault of being being roped into Carnage Reigns. So I'm sure that will go back to being fine. Noctera, just. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. But I think that was offset by the the, the, the pleasant surprise of, of this. It was so, so good. So that's, that's all I got for you this week. Let me know your thoughts on what I picked up. What did you pick up this week that you're really excited about or you really enjoyed? Uh, have you read Once Upon a Time at the End of the World or are you reading it in individual issues? Because um, I'm not sure what issue they're up to now, but... I think this trade just came out this week. So, and this is five issues. So I'm guessing they're probably around eight or nine or something like that on, on, uh, on the wall issues, but absolutely fantastic. Um, but let me know your thoughts. What did you get? Like, comment, subscribe, all of the, uh, the YouTube stuff. And of course, don't forget to make yours Titan. This video was brought to you by Titan comic pressing. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Titan comic pressing LLC.